Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Jason, host of Fighting Words Financial. And it's been a while since I've made a regular video like this because I've been doing a lot of live streams. But I wanted to make one about this particular article because it's so freaking cool. And it shows how far along we are when it comes to the adoption of uh, electrified transportation. So Ukraine is now using these 200 mile range electric bikes with in-law rockets to take out Russian tanks. Now these bikes are basically just electric bikes that have been, uh, by electric dirt bikes rather, that have been modified to hold in-law rockets and rocket launchers and to carry uh, two people along with them, a fire team basically. So what makes this so cool is that one of the big sort of centers of resistance that I've gotten when I talk to people about the electrification of transportation is I always talk about things like war where, you know, you can ship in gasoline, but you can't ship in electricity or what do you do when the bike runs out of electricity? So a couple of those concerns have actually been addressed in the last couple of years with changing battery chemistry, advancements in battery technology. And look, it, you can carry along replacement battery packs. They're no larger than the size uh, of these rockets. You can extend your range in that manner. The battery pack can also in a pinch be made into an incendiary device itself. People kind of forget that. But what is really cool is that it is not just the Ukrainian military that is using this. Uh, this uh, article points this out. Now, I saw this bike just yesterday advertised on Electric here on this website. And I started thinking about those applications and lo and behold, later on in the day, this article comes up. This is a Ukrainian electric motorbike company, Delfast. I saw that advertisement uh, yesterday and they have seen their electric bikes being used for some you know, diverse tasks as this article states, such as breaking Guinness uh, world record books, outfitting Mexican police. But the latest use is perhaps the bike's most important mission yet, helping Ukrainian soldiers strike a David versus Goliath blow against Russia's barbaric invasion of their country. So that is a uh, sort of a qualification that I would not have put in my own speech just because I try to remain neutral in there that is in the article. Uh, but no, I'm not a fan of the, the Russian invasion, of course, of Ukraine, but I try to be as, as neutral as I can, all right? So the image below shows one of the many Delfast electric bikes that is currently being supplied to Ukrainian armed forces who are using them to defend their country over the last two months here. So the electric bikes, which have functional pedals allowing them to push their range over 200 miles, have enough speed and power to border on electric dirt bike territory. The hand throttle means that the riders can use the pedals as footrests when necessary, focusing on, instead on maintaining speed and navigating tricky terrain. When pushed hard, the bikes can reach as high as 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour. Their long travel suspension and ability to carry heavy loads has made them particularly useful for navigating forested trails or overlanding when trails are non-existent. The bikes used by Ukrainian defenders have been modified to carry in-law rockets or next generation light anti-armor weapons, which are specifically designed to allow a single operator to destroy an enemy tank. The rockets are designed to be human portable and carried by infantry, but the 28-pound weapon is much easier to haul over long distances when carried on the back of an electric uh, bike. Such portable anti-tank weapons are a game changer in, in Ukraine's fight to defend its sovereign territory from a takeover, but their use isn't without risk. Of course, there's no armor, right? So real life isn't like uh, Counter-Strike. It isn't a video game. Getting in a position to open fire with an in-law or similar U.S. javelin the Javelin missile is incredibly risky and exposes the operator to the enemy tank's main cannon and multiple heavy machine guns. The use of high power electric bikes to quickly and quietly reach a firing position can significantly reduce the soldier's exposure and improve the mission um, success outlook. So what they've kind of done in this respect is revive a unit uh, that existed a long time ago called the Dragoon, where you know the Dragoon, the Dragoon would ride a horse in the battle and then fight on foot. And this is sort of the same thing. They've revived that role. So Ukrainian forces are already employing multiple types of light electric two-wheelers in creative capacities to repel Russian forces. Another Ukrainian company, Elik, is also supplied the country's armed forces with silent, uh, powerful electric motorbikes for use on the battlefield. Here's one of them, at least showing a soldier who's armed riding it. I don't know if they're actually riding in the battle. This could be uh, before any of this all started. Maybe it's just being demonstrated. I don't know. But electric motorcycles and e-bikes are rapidly becoming a more common tool employed by militaries around the world. And this is what I think is most important. I did not realize this. 
that as far back as 2018, we learned that Norway's armed forces began testing fat fire, fat tire electric bikes for border guard patrols. Patrol roles were also performed by the New Zealand Defense Forces in 2020, and Australian soldiers have been documenting stealth electric bikes since last year. And we saw the first application of helicopter-mounted electric bikes last year in an application designed for quick insertion of special operators on low-signature electric dirt bikes. Multiple special forces units in Europe and the Middle East have also tested high-power electric mountain bikes for field use with paratroopers even airdropping electric dirt bikes onto the battlefield, all right? So I think this is all very important, not just because it's pretty cool, but very important because it shows how far along we are in the electrification of transportation. Anyway, that is just one quick article that I wanted to share with you guys today. The name of this company is Delfast. I don't know if they're publicly traded or not. I've never heard of them here in the United States until yesterday when I saw them on Electric. But uh, these type of fat fire electric, uh, fat tire electric bikes are, are becoming more common here. Uh, and I see, you see them every once in a while. And I think they're going to become a more common mode of transportation worldwide. Anyway, those are just my thoughts for today. Thank you very much. And I will see you next time.